RC. Hey, welcome back to the bench. I know it's been a little bit. Um, we've been pretty, pretty busy with, with other things going on in our day-to-day -day life. But we're back up on here today with our project clocking in. Now, unless you guys follow us on Facebook at Canine RC Oklahoma, you haven't seen anything about this rig. Uh, we've been working on it for a little while now, and we're gonna put out a complete build overview of the truck. We'll do some run videos. We're gonna do a radar test. Um, but here lately, we've been working the bugs out of it. Now, this is, this is gonna be primarily a straight line mud and dirt drag truck. Uh, or pro mega truck. So we've had some issues with uh, the, the launch. Uh, we've, we've been testing the, you know, right out of the gate. And what's happening is, you know, the torque from the motors is, is just, it's bending this thing all over the place. So, which we'll get it worked out. We'll get it worked out. One of the things that can help alleviate that is a sway bar. Now, <clears throat> If you've ever looked for a sway bar in an Axio SC Extend, they don't make one. Boom Racing has a set of extendable links that has a sway bar incorporated into those. So if you're watching this, then you're probably interested in a sway bar. That might be an option for you. We're going to show you how to do it with a, an, an actual Axio sway bar kit. Not for the SC Extend, but we got it to work and it looks amazing. It looks, it looks almost factory. So. Let's get right into it. I'll tell you what you need. I'll show you the kit and I'll tell you how to do it step by step. Basically, we put this one on the back and I'll tell you what it is. It's an Axial Yeti XL sway bar kit. Now, the reason we went with the XL is because the Wraith and Bomber sway bar kits, the bar was just not quite long enough. Um, what, what would happen is the arms would come off the, the torsion bar and they'd hit the shocks. Now you could probably get around that by running a smaller set of shocks, uh, but we didn't want to change shocks. So we needed a longer bar that we could cut down to fit. And we came across the Yeti XL kit, it's by Hot Racing. Absolutely beautiful kit. Um, craftsmanship is, is right on, we're really impressed with it. And we got it in red, which is the only color we could get. So that worked because our shocks are red. So you're gonna need a couple other things to do this. You're gonna need a set of calipers. You can use a ruler. Uh, personally, I like to be a little, a little more precise than that. You're gonna need the sway bar kit, which is YEX311R. It's, I think we paid $38.99 for it on eBay. Um, you're gonna need some wheel collars, and these are by Great Plains. They were $5.49 at our local hobby shop. Their part number is GPM Q. 4307. All they are is a 532nds wheel collar and what that's going to be is that's going to be your stop that's on your torsion bar to keep your sway bar from going side to side through the chassis. And don't, guys, you don't need to write any of this down because I'm going to put a parts list at the very end uh, with all the measurements and everything. You're going to need an 11 64ths drill bit, obviously a drill, uh, some Loctite, and guys, really, that's, that's about it. It's pretty easy to do. So give me just a second and we'll, we'll get zoomed in and I'll, uh, I'll show you the kit and then I'll, I'll tell you exactly how we did it. It's, it's pretty easy. Um, I, you won't need a step-by-step -step video tutorial uh, as far as actually doing it. I can tell you and it's, it's a piece of cake. So give me a second and we'll be right back. Okay guys, so there's the kit. Now everything that comes in the kit is your two torsion bars, you'll get a soft and a hard, and they are pretty long, uh, way longer than what you need. You're gonna get the two arms on each side, and you're gonna get the links to go to your lower shock mount and link mount that connect to the arms. You're gonna get all the hardware, all the O-rings, everything you need to actually bolt the kit together. What you don't get you don't get the wheel collars, which is this little sleeve right here uh, with the set screw in it. And you don't get a longer bolt for your lower mount down here. Now, you're going to need about a 35 millimeter long bolt if you set it up the way we have. And I'll show you what I'm talking about because there's a little spacer that you're going to have to put 
uh, on the bottom down there by your, your Lincoln shock mounts. I'll show you that in just a second. So what you're going to have to do, you're going to have to take this bar. Now, if you use our measurements, guys, it'll come out just like this if you do it the right way. Um, it, you know, you can make it longer to go out wider. That's fine. Just understand that, you know, you're going to be, depending on your wheel offset, you're going to be getting closer to the tires and you're going to need a bigger spacer down here at the bottom the further that goes out. You don't necessarily have to drill the hole back here. We did. If you start going a little more forward, you know, you could potentially be hitting your shocks up here. So you don't want to do that. So this is what you're going to need to do. When you decide on where you're going to put it, we put ours right at the back of the chassis. You're going to have to drill an 11 64th hole on each side of the chassis. And I'll tell you that the, the, the size of the torsion bar that comes in that kit fits really nice. So you'll drill your hole. This torsion bar needs to be cut to 125 millimeters. 125 millimeters. Now, the deal with the torsion bar, now understand guys, I, I, wanna, I wanna make sure you, you know this. If you're not comfortable with spending $40 on an aftermarket part, and then cutting and modifying that part to where you can't use it for what it was intended for, for the vehicle it was intended for, if you mess it up, then maybe the boom racing links are for you. But with that, I'll tell you, guys have faith in yourself. This is not that hard to do, and I'm sure you're capable of doing it. Um, like I said, have a little faith. So you'll have to cut it to 125 millimeter. Now, the sway bar is ground on one side, flat. Obviously, it, you know, this set screw has to have something to bite into. So that's the hardest part of this whole mod is regrinding that torsion bar so that it matches the other side. You know, those, those, those flat spots, you know, they have to be lined up like this. So all I did was clamp the bar down, go slow, make sure the bar's not moving on you and grind away. You, you know, all you need is a, is a little flat spot to get it to hold on to. <laughs> so you'll cut that. These collars, you're gonna have to have a flat spot for those to bite into also. And I'll tell you the easiest way to do that, at least for me. So you're gonna have to go ahead and bolt up the bottom. So when you get the kit out, go ahead and put it together. Um, make sure you're using your blue Loctite. You know, this is metal to metal. Go ahead and bolt your, your vertical arms to your horizontal arms and get them bolted to the lower shock mount. Now. Let me break and go to the lower shock mount and I'll show you that spacer real quick. Okay guys, on your lower mounts, only a couple of things you're gonna need. You're gonna need this little spacer. It's, all that is is just a three millimeter aluminum spacer. You can get them at your local hobby shop. They're not expensive. You're also gonna need a longer uh, bolt for your shock and link mounts. I'll tell you, 35 millimeter and you'll be okay. Uh, you know, that's a three millimeter bolt. As long as you get it 35 millimeters long, you, you'll be good to go. So there's not much to the bottom. Okay. So now when you're ready to put this thing together, now if you're, you know, if you don't feel confident, I'll tell you guys, you can mock this up with a, with a little brass rod. That, that's what we did uh, when we were kind of figuring out the measurements and everything. If you are confident, then just jump right into it. Once you get your bar cut, your holes are drilled, Slide that bar in there, you're gonna have to put your collars on. Now, these collars, you know, they'll go right over that ground spot, fine. Well, when they get to that lip where the bar goes back to full size, you're probably gonna have to take a pair of needle nose and just tap them past that little lip right there. Once they're past it, they'll travel back and forth smooth. There's virtually little to no play. They fit really, really nice. So when you have to grind that, you're gonna, you're gonna do that after you get everything bolted together for your, for your collars. So your calipers, where they're gonna come in really handy is when you get this thing bolted down, you wanna measure from inside this arm to the outside of the chassis. Outside of the chassis, inside the arm. You wanna make sure that distance is the same so that your, your bars are, are centered. Okay, once you get everything bolted on, and it's in place, tighten everything down, tighten the collars down, everything. Then take one collar off at a time, just loosen it, slide it out of the way. What I did was took a Dremel with a little grinding disc on it, a very small one, 
and all I did was grind down a little flat spot right there. And you don't have to worry about it moving, you've already taken your measurements, you know, keep pressure on this side because that collar's tightened down. So just keep it pressed that way and you'll be fine. Tighten this one down, do the same thing over here. Take it loose, slide it out of the way, keep pressure on the bar over here, grind it down, you'll be good to go, tighten it all back up. Once again, lock tight here, 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 and here. Um, other than that, guys, this is pretty easy. It, we've, we've tested this, it made a huge improvement. If you wanna see some of those launch tests, check us out on Facebook, uh, that's where we posted them. Uh, you can see the before and after. If you scroll down a little bit, the before test was with a red body, the after test is running this body. Um, it did make a big difference. We're probably gonna add one to the front. Uh, other than that, We've got some parts in for this truck. We're actually gonna be uh, putting them on here real, real shortly. And we're almost done and we'll, we'll get to the, uh, to the reveal. So anyway, guys, I hope you liked it. Like, share, subscribe if it helped you out. Uh, we'll keep putting them out and hopefully it won't be as long the next time. We apologize for that. Anyway, SCX10 sway bar from an Axial Yeti XL kit.